I think I need to go up. Uh, back up we go. <laughs> Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today, I'm going to talk about Mighty Joe Young. Mighty Joe Young is a 1998 theatrical release directed by Ron Underwood, cinematography by Donald Peterman and Oliver Wood, editing by Paul Hirsch, music by James Horner, and it's written by Mark Rosenthal and Lawrence Connor. Ron Underwood is best known for Heart and Souls, City Slickers, Tremors, and this. Donald Peterman is best known for Star Trek IV, Flashdance, Men in Black, and Point Break. Oliver Wood, who is not the star Quidditch player, is best known for The Equalizer 2, Safe House, the Bourne Ultimatum in U571. Paul Hirsch is best known for A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. James Horner, I covered in the video at Something Wicked This Way Comes, link will be in the description. Mark Rosenthal is best known for Mona Lisa Smile, Planet of the Apes, The Jewel of the Nile, and Roots. Lawrence Connor is best known for Planet of the Apes, Star Trek VI, Superman IV, and Boardwalk Empire. The film is based off of, or considered kind of a remake of the 1949 film of the same name. The film stars Charlize Theron, Bill Paxton, Johnny Alexander, and Raid Serbagia. Charlize Theron plays Jill and is best known for Monster, Mad Max Fury Road, Snow White and the Huntsman, and Tully. Bill Paxton plays Greg and is best known for Aliens, Apollo 13, Frailty and Twister. John Alexander plays Joe. He's the puppeteer because obviously it's a puppet and CG given the depending situation. He's best known for Hellboy 2, Men in Black 1 and 2, and Planet of the Apes. Raid Serbagia plays Stressor and is best known for The Saint, Batman Begins, Mission Impossible 2, and Snatch. The reason there are two cinematographers is because Donald Peterman was the original cinematographer and he suffered severe injury on set. His camera crane platform plummeted 18 feet to the ground and it snapped and he suffered head, inju head injuries, a broken leg and some broken ribs and the camera was obviously also injured. The ape was a costume created by Rick Baker and it was used the majority of the time. They, were all, they didn't really want to do a lot of a completely digital Joe but there were times that it was completely digital Joe otherwise it was this costume. The film had a 90 million dollar budget but only made 50.6 million dollars in the box office. It's got a 54 percent on Rotten Tomatoes but Roger Eber gave it three out of four stars. So this film received very mixed reviews. Like 54% is a middle of the road. People were very mixed on it. They thought it had this innocence that was very sweet, but then it also was very predictable, et cetera, et cetera. And I would say, I have to agree, I'm very mixed on the film because there were pieces of it that were very sweet and beautiful. And there were pieces of it that were genuinely dumb. And then there were some jokes that were so funny to me so I'm very mixed on the film myself. I want to say there are two parent deaths. Jill's mom dies and Joe's mom dies. And they're both main characters, so I'm counting both of those as parent deaths. I did cry watching this, so obviously it was good sometimes. But I do first want to point out, I don't have a lot to say about the film. The film was fine. It was cute. Um, I think I saw this one once when I was younger, and for some reason I thought Charlize's character was Helen Hunt. And I think that might be because I watched... Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt together in Twister that I just thought they were together again in Mighty Joe Young. I don't know, okay? I don't know. It's what I remember from being a young girl that saw a blonde woman in a film. I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. Anyway. <laughs> the bit players in this film have some of the funniest lines. When Joe is like wreaking havoc on Hollywood, there were some cheesy parts like him sitting on the BMW and him climbing the Chinese at, uh, theater and the Hollywood sign. Both not super funny moments. I wasn't really here for that. I thought it, like the Beamer part especially was cringe to me because he had done nothing like that previously. It felt like a very George of the Jungle moment in a film that was not anything like that. Um, but then the bit players throughout those scenes are hilarious. When there's an accident and Joe comes out of the semi. There's a guy that doesn't see Joe come out of the semi. He just thinks it's an accident and everyone's like running and screaming. And he goes, what? Nobody's seen an accident before? <laughs> and it made me laugh because I lay. <laughs> and then the other one that really killed me is when <laughs> Strasser and his evil sidekick try to, they like take this guy's car. They carjack this guy. And they say, get out of the car. And the guy <laughs> fifth time this year and that 
destroyed me. I thought that was so funny. Like such a moment, like it could have just been like, whatever, he gets into the car, he doesn't say anything. But the fact that they just said, no, this is like random bit player is gonna say fifth time this year, like add such like a funny moment. Like I genuinely died at him saying fifth time this year. So that was very funny. The chairman of the board is super sexist. There's also some icky factors. For some reason, I was not about the fact that Jill falls in love with the first white man that which is like, I don't know if it's the first white man that came, but like also, he's probably like one of the first white men that came there. I don't know. So it felt a little cringe town in that situation um, with the romance, but they did have very believable chemistry, Bill Paxton and Charlize did. Um, I believed their chemistry, I believed there was something there between them. Um, I'm a little upset they didn't focus more on like the caged aspect of it. Like she felt like she was in a cage when she went in to be in that apartment. And Joe was like in this enclosure, but like it was big, so it wasn't that big of a cage. And like, I don't know, it felt very like they could have talked about a much deeper subject, but they only like skimmed on them. And I was a little bit upset about that. I would have liked to see commentary on that a little bit more. Um, I don't know. I don't have much else. It was, I cried. Oh, I cried. Um, when Joe saves the kid at the end and he falls off the Ferris wheel, the way he hits the ground, like that slap, thud, whatever you want to call it, smack into the ground, like shook me. Like, like I did not like that they like had a sound effect for it. Like that was horrible. And then when like he wasn't waking up, I didn't remember any of this. So I thought maybe he dies because to me it was like, the only other way out of this is if they somehow get another preserve for him because he's gonna be hunted if he goes back home. So like, I generally was like, yo, is the way out of this like he dies because he saved this kid and then he'll go down in history as like an ape that saved a kid or whatever. And so um, I got real emotional. I was like, no, I don't want him to die. He was just confused. And then uh, he didn't, so that was good. <laughs> So that's why I cried. That's everything I have for Mighty Joe Young. I agree with all these critics. It's pretty middle of the road. It's not horrible. Definitely not. Like, it's a watchable movie. It's entertaining. Bill Paxton and Charlize there. Oh, Bill Paxton, by the way, they couldn't have made him look more like Steve Irwin if they tried. Like, <laughs> he just like really is Steve Irwin in this film. Um, anyway, that's everything. My final rating is six gorillas out of 10. Our total movie count is. Our parent death toll is. <laughs> Our cry count is. <laughs> if you want to keep up with the movie watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter. You'll find out what movie I'm watching when I put out videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Join Patreon. Always fun things going on over there. Buy merch. The new merch is still up, still available. Please go buy it. I think maybe we'll do a sale soon, spring breakish. So head on over and buy some merch because the new design is beautiful. You can also get this tried and true, trusty one. So just head on over there and get some merch. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll show you what you do, and don't be stressor about it. I see your true blood shine through. I see your true blood, and that's why.